taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia EV9. The screen itself is going to be the same look across the entire EV9 lineup, but this is the screen for the lower trim levels that doesn't have a lot of the extra technology like the blind spot monitoring system and the head-up display. But if you want to walk through on those features specifically, you'll find a walkthrough video down in the description of this video. But let's dive in, I'll show you everything that you need to know. So the steering wheel inside of the EV9 is going to be heated and along the driver's side door, you've got a button that you can push in order to toggle the heated steering wheel on. And there are two unique levels and there are buttons for the heated first row seats, ventilated first row seats as well. Now inside of this trim level of the vehicle, like the majority of the trims, steering wheel adjustment is going to be manual telescoping. So just down by your left knee, you've got that release there in order to go in, out, up and down. So it's telescopic and then just click it to lock it back into place. In the higher trims, there's going to be a power telescoping steering wheel, and that'll be done along the left side there, just by your left knee. Now, there are a lot of things you need to know. So the first one, powering the EV9 up. So you can see there's a little EV button down by my right thumb. So that's going to let you turn the vehicle on or off. And then it's shift by wire instead of a traditional hand shifter. So all you're going to do, foot on the brake, you can go drive, neutral, reverse, or park. And then depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in, you can see right inside of the cluster screen that you've got the forward and reverse park sensing system. So if your vehicle has that sensing system that will show up in the higher trims, it's a side sensing system as well. But it's really nice. I love the flat bottom rounded top there. The steering wheel inside of the vehicle feels premium. Oh, I love it. But yeah, that's the basic of the shifter there. So you've got your drive reverse, uh, drive neutral reverse, and then there's a button on the tip of the right stick in order to put yourself back into park. If you're in any gear outside of park, so you're in drive neutral or reverse, if you just come to a stop and turn the car off, it's automatically going to drop you into park as well, which is kind of neat. Stick on the left-hand side, obviously gonna be for your blinkers. Inside of some of the higher trims, there's the blind spot view monitor, where when you go left or right, right inside of the cluster screen, it's gonna show you what's going on inside as well. So it's gonna show you what's going on along the sides, which is really neat, so in your blind spot. But in this one, it doesn't have it, but it does have the option of adjusting your lights. You're gonna be in the auto mode the majority of the time. When you're in the auto mode and you push away, that puts you into an auto high beam mode. So if the vehicle recognizes the high beams are needed, it's going to turn them on. If somebody's oncoming, it's going to dim them before bringing them right back on again. You can still flash them in this mode if you'd like to, but in order to permanently lock your high beams out, just go to the very top mode, push away in order to toggle on your high beams, pull towards you in order to be able to turn them off. So it's very simple. Along the right hand side, that's going to be for your wipers. So you can control your front wipers with some variable speeds. In the auto mode, you can then move this rocker up and down to set how fast or slow the rain is hitting your windshield. And then you've also got the flexibility, the tip of that right stick, toggling on, yeah, you can see it in the reflection there. The rear wiper is coming on there as well so you can adjust it that way you're going to pull towards you for the front wiper fluid and you're going to push away to get that rear wiper fluid going the car also has paddle shifters so you've got your plus on the left hand side minus along the right hand side it works different in evs though compared to other like internal combustion engines so if you go up you're going to max out at your eye pedal drive and that's one pedal drive so if you take your foot off of the accelerator the car slows down very very rapidly versus if you're in level one or level zero you take your foot off the accelerator and you slow down gradually instead so more of like a traditional gas engine feel i personally recommend usually being in level two or three unless you like that one pedal drive feel where you're also going to capture the maximum amount of charge as you go matter of preference but you've got these buttons along the bottom as well and this is going to be your drive mode selector so you've got three different modes or so technically four a custom mode that you can set up through the infotainment system but you're going to be in eco mode if you're just cruising on the highway for the best possible range as you drive into normal mode that's going to drop your range and then sport gives you the best performance but also the worst range at the same time and then the range that you get in my drive is going to be based on how you have it set up inside of the infotainment system but customize the look a tiny little bit as you flip between these modes and then you can also change between different terrain modes. So there's snow, mud, and sand. And these are gonna play with traction control, stability control, and things like that, just to give you a different response depending on the terrain that you're currently in. It's gonna be a matter of preference which way you go there. And then there are a series of different buttons. So along the top right side, it's gonna be a voice command prompt. 
So you've got, hold on here, so many different options. You can search, so you can search for GPS coordinates if you want to, search for point of interest icons. You can open and close the windows, the lift gate, the steering wheel, you can turn it on or off. You can adjust the seats, turn on the heated ventilated seats and so many other things. So what I'd recommend is when you get your EV9, go through the voice recognition screen to learn everything that you can do because there is so, so much flexibility. If you were hooked up over Android or iPhone devices, so Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you could do a longer push and hold of that button in order to activate your Google or your Siri Assistant there. Yeah, so it gave me the prompt in order to connect a phone. You can answer or hang up on a phone call there. You could also, so you can toggle your media on easily here. There's a volume rocker here as well. But if we go, let's actually go media for a second. And I want to go to FM, there we go. So you've got your volume rocker here. So you can easily adjust your volume. You can push in the middle in order to mute. The mode button, you can also adjust through the infotainment system. So if you go to your buttons mode, what does it do? So you've got your few buttons there. So custom button on the bottom, you can have it change between a few different options. Same thing with your mode. It's what options do you wanna jump in between? So if you have a tendency to listen to sounds of music, FM, but you don't listen to AM, so you wanna choose between these three sources. As you press mode, that's gonna jump you between all of your available sources. And then if we're on the home screen for a second, you can push up or down here in order to jump between any of your active presets. You can then also press and hold there if you wanted to do a seek. So if you're in AM, FM, whatever the case may be, actually I'll show you here, let's go media into FM for a second. Let's go back home. Now, if you push and hold, it's gonna act as a seek button instead. So you could push up and down to go between presets, light press or longer press and hold to jump between stations and seek out. From there, series of buttons along the left side. So that's gonna be for your smart cruise control system. You can toggle the system on while you're driving and it's just regular or adaptive cruise, I should say. So you don't have the option of going for a regular cruise control inside of the vehicle, so strictly adaptive. It's a good system though, because you can set a distance. And if you have it set, let's say at hundred kilometers on the, an hour on the highway, if the car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically gonna break. If they change lanes, pick up speed, whatever the case may be, it's gonna bring you back up to your currently set speed. You can also push up to set your speed and then push up or down to increase or decrease one kilometer, one mile per hour at a time. You can also push and hold in order to go up to the nearest zero. So if you've got it set currently at 55 kilometers an hour, you push and hold up, it'll jump you to 60. Push and hold down, it'll jump you to 50. But if you wanna walk through on how this system actually works in person, check down in the description of this video. That also works in tandem with the lane centering system. So you can see a little steering wheel there. And what that does is it's a lane follow assist. So it keeps you perfectly balanced in your lane as you go. The car is not self-driving, but when you have the adaptive cruise system going along with that lane follow assist, it gets so, so close and it's so fun at the same time to use. So really get used to this system. You can use it on residential streets if you want to. And it's a, just such a great system once you get the hang of it. And then you've got these buttons, which are going to let you navigate through the little cluster screen there. And there are a boatload of different options here. So you've got your current speed what your current battery level is. So I've got 441 kilometers to go. That's also shown here as 83%. So the battery's got 83% left. You can see what mode you're currently in. If the parking brake is on, so just down by your left knee, you could hit the brake and then push in in order to toggle that parking brake off or pull in order to turn it on. You can also increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen by going this way as well. Oh, accidentally opened the charging door there and close to ghost. <laughs> but yeah, you can open and close the charge door and a few other things down there as well. But outside of that, you can see, like I said, what mode you're currently in. So whether that's gonna be sport mode, eco mode, whatever the case may be, outside temperature there, what gear you're currently in. So whether that's park, drive, neutral, reverse, and then back into park again, and then when you throw yourself in park, the parking brake is automatically engaged. And then you've got your current odometer reading along the bottom right hand side. And as you hit the pages button, you jump between a few different options. So you've got your current trip counter. So that's from when the car was last off and when it was turned on again, that's the distance that you've traveled. This one is from what was, when it was last plugged in. So whatever charge you've gotten or whatever distance you've traveled since it was last charged. And then ooh, scrolling down, that's going to give you the option for last reset. So think of that as your total trip one counter. 
And then on any of these, well, these two anyways, so th this one you can't reset, but after charging and then last reset, you can also push and hold the middle button there in order to be able to reset back to zero. But you can see there, you've also got this little notch in the middle. So as of right now, we're using 21 per hundred kilometers. And you can see that's noted right in the very middle. So as you get better economy, it's going to drop or it's going to raise up. It's just pretty high right now because I'm parked doing an explainer video with the air conditioning on. So that's something to consider there. As you drop down, you've also got a few other options. So your total range, how far you're able to get. If you drop down, actually, yeah. So if we go into that mode for a second and jump out of, let's go to eco mode, watch this. So that goes away and you can see there, our total range has also changed and you'll see two different lines. So that's the current total range based off of air conditioning and things like that turned on. If those were all turned off, you'd be able to see your maximum available range as well. Scrolling down is tire pressure. So you can see right there, tires are a little bit unbalanced, but not too bad. And then there's also which wheel is getting which amount of power. So this is the all wheel drive version of the vehicle. You might notice that when you're cruising on the highway, it might just be the rear wheels that are getting power. And then you'll see the power draw and the battery level right in the very middle as well. Pushing that pages button gets you to this option. So you do have the option of getting a, not a full mapping cluster, but if we let's search for nice and Canadian of me, Tim Hortons. And let's just set as destination. It's going to be the closest one and start guidance. Watch this. Ah, so not full mapping cluster, but you've at least got your turn by turn directions that would show up. And then if you had an EV9 with a head-up display, that would also show up in the head-up display. So your turn-by-turn -turn directions, really, really cool. And then when that's canceled out, that just brings you back to your regular compass view instead. And then you push one more time in order to get to this screen. So if you've got your adaptive cruise control system going, if the lane follow assist system is going as well, the centering system. So you'll have different notifications showing up there. It'll look slightly different, but it looks pretty cool at the same time. And then if you push and hold OK, that's going to launch you into a series of additional settings inside of the infotainment system. So you've got driving convenience settings, driver attention warnings, park safety, and so many other things. But if you want to walk through on the infotainment specifically, check down in the description below for that walkthrough. A few that I'll point out, you've got turn signals. So as a default, it's going to go three blinks, but you can go one, three, five, or seven. Hiding the assist is available there and a series of other things. But if we jump into set up for a second, you can also adjust the screen layout. So as of right now, I'm in the eco mode, but if I were to jump into another mode like normal or sport, you'll see it gives you a little bit more of an aggressive display. But if you wanted to link your graphics to the drive mode, you could do that, but you could also permanently lock it out to one of the other modes instead. So that one's going to be a matter of preference. Other thing to point out would be the buttons, which I've already showed you. So the mode button versus the custom button, you can adjust what those do. And then there's the cluster screen. So you can adjust the brightness there. You can also show what cluster theme you're going to get, what content do you want showing up? So if, uh, if it's too icy outside, it's going to give you a heads up that the ice, the road might be icy. And then you've also got a welcome sound that'll play when you go to first turn the vehicle on. So there's a lot of information that you need to know about that infotainment system. But like I said, full walkthrough down in the description. Well, I know that's quite a little bit of information, but that's what you need to know about the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia EV9.